also retrospectively, uh, you know, when you look back and you say, yep, these were the items that we talked about in the last month, the entire team meeting. Uh, these are the action items that were driven out and these were the actually um, the things that we actually did, right? So you want to make sure you have that, uh, you know, um, sense that the team uh, feels that, you know, you, they are being heard, right? If you just uh, write it and document for the sake of documenting and not doing anything, then the team will say, well, what, what's the purpose of this, you know, giving my feedback because nothing is going to happen, right? So you want to make sure that you document it, you follow up on that in the next uh, entire team meeting, say, yep, this is actually done. Now we are, uh, you know, we will be doing these other new items that you have mentioned. Um, and from last entire team meeting that we met last month, these are the uh, results, right? So uh, my recommendation, having those uh, once a month meeting, uh, uh, make it casual, yet formal, document them, and, and do it with the cadence of uh, once a month. One-on-one -on -one with the leads, uh, if you're managing, uh, like I manage uh, about uh, six uh, leads, and then of course each lead have different team members uh, underneath them. So I meet with the team leads, review them, their uh, performance, and the team's performance, uh, the KPIs. Ed talked about the KPIs in the previous slide. Uh, you want to make sure that, you know, if you're uh, managing a development team, especially, right, in the execution team, are there too many bugs coming up? So if they're coming up from one specific team leads team, then you want to bu bubble it up and then say, you know what, you know, your team members are, uh, you know, uh, are basically having issues. Uh, you know, why is this, right? So instead of, you know, waiting and then maybe just procrastinating on those issues, you want to talk to them when when it's early enough, right? So uh, have those uh, bi-weekly meetings with your team leads and, and be candid with them. Talk to them openly. Have Listen to them. Maybe, you know, they have some issues. Maybe their team members are not the right fit, right? Or maybe you're expecting too much. So give them an opportunity uh, to listen in and also execute upon whatever is being actually heard. Again, uh, I would highly recommend make it, uh, you know, casual yet formal. And what I mean by the exact same strategy that I've I talked about in entire team meeting, create a confluence page or whatever uh, tools are you using, make sure you, you put the date on the team meeting, put in a column for action items. When did you meet? What action item needs to be taken? What item did, did you discuss? And then the next uh, bi-weekly meeting, you basically go over it. Um, this way you have a track record of what happened, what was discussed. And you know what, this also helps you at the end of the year, right? It helps me, right? When I'm actually uh, doing evaluation for my team leads and even for these uh, uh, one layer below um, and team leads say, you know what, we need to give a raise to John Doe. I say, why? Because, you know, look at the, you know, this whole biweekly uh, data, you always complain and we have seen, uh, you know, the issues that are caused by this, uh, this John Doe and you're not asking me to give a raise. Well, he may have improved after six months, but let's maybe, you know, uh, evaluate him further. Again, it's just an extreme example, but what I'm saying is that make it casual yet formal. Document it, drive the action items, have a cadence of meeting on a bi-weekly basis, okay? So Shane, move on to the next one. I don't know, Shane, if people are asking questions, they're asking you, or I don't know what the format is, but if there are any questions, make sure you just uh, let me know, okay? Oh, will you? Okay. Um, so I talked about the Kanban board. So I'm going to go through some of the slides. So these are the screenshots, right? So um, uh, again, if you guys are familiar with the Kanban board, then this would look very, very familiar. Uh, we use Jira. Jira comes with the uh, Kanban board uh, pre-installed. All you have to do is create a board and then you define some attributes, swim lanes, and whatnot. For example, in this uh, development uh, uh, board, we have. Uh, you know, uh, open and at requirement, ready for UAT, UAT approved, ready for grooming, grew at grooming and ready for development. And from there, the team picks up at the development and actually follow the second uh, second part of the board, which is basically NQA and then and, and, uh, UAT review and then in develop and, and production ready, right? So um, these uh, swim lanes help you identify what is being worked upon the web, right? And also it gives you a good visual of uh, who's working on what, right? Um, and, and you can also set the capacity of uh, within one uh, swim lane, how many people can uh, work on one specific swim lane. Uh, so this way the swim lanes are not really uh, blocked and clogged. Uh, and you want to make sure if you have five developers, for example, then there are no more than five uh, uh, tickets within that swim lane. So you can set that limit uh, of that whip. 
um, uh, oftentimes people just take on more they can, you know, uh, they bite on more than they can chew, as I say. So they can probably put two or three tickets under their name and then they, they can't deliver. Then guess what? You know, then your delivery gets stopped, right? So you want to make sure that, you know, these swim lanes max men capacity is clearly defined using the Kanban board. And uh, when you're doing your uh, daily scrum, this board is used uh, religiously as part of your meeting. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is an example, just a screenshot of the epic themes and story writings. So who, what, why, description and acceptance criteria. So whenever, you know, um, uh, uh, your product owner is writing a story, you want to make sure that you always start with the uh, who, uh, who is, it, uh, is it addressed to this story, uh, the what and the why, and then the acceptance criteria. Um, these are important uh, uh, sections that you want to define within a story. Uh, you may want to probably add or remove uh, items uh, within that story, but that is something that, uh, you know, I highly recommend. And of course, I, again, uh, based on my studies with Mike Cohen, uh, th this is something that uh, I have learned that it's very useful. Uh, not only in understanding and comprehending of the uh, what is being asked, but also from the uh, QA perspective, because, because what we uh, we can do now is uh, from the QA uh, standpoint of view, uh, you can take the acceptance criteria, turn them into a, a, a turn them into uh, to test cases, and and then people can start you know, you know uh, executing upon them and, and making sure that every single acceptance criteria is has been met. Uh, what we do, uh, or I would recommend, is basically uh, once the QA is uh, uh, you know executing this acceptance criteria uh, against each acceptance criteria, they can say pass, fail, pass, fail. This way, when you are reviewing it with the stakeholder slash uh, product owner and doing the demo, uh, they can see, yup, the QA has passed every single acceptance criteria. They have actually walked through every single acceptance criteria. Um, I do that, you know, I highly recommend doing that because again, this way, uh, if something was missed uh, during uh, the development cycle when the QA is doing it and they are actually uh, making sure they're writing a, a pass or fail against each acceptance criteria, the stakeholders are comfortable, the product owners are comfortable, that the QA has done a good job in terms of making sure everything has been tested which was asked within the acceptance criteria. Okay, let's move on. So we already talked about uh, grooming demos in Slack. Let's see, you can skip that one. Entire team meeting and one-on-one, -on -one, again, on the right side, you can see is um, uh, just an example. So you can put the date when you're, you met with either the team, entire team, or maybe one-on-one -on -one with the lead. Uh, you can put the discussion points, again, give an opportunity uh, to the uh, team, either entire team or maybe individual one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, again, keep separate pages or uh, separate documents uh, within Confluence or whatever tool you may choose. Uh, and make sure that you, know, you allow them the flexibility to write in advance. Uh, and then discussion points uh, would be, again, uh, things that you will discuss during the meetings, either with the entire once a month meeting or one-on-one. -on -one. Then you drive the action items from it, right? So you say, okay, well, I'm gonna probably have this done. Uh, this is uh, something that is already done. Uh, or we will address this in the next sprint, whatever it might be. Uh, you may want to probably uh, put the action items. And then again, you can see I put check marks, right? Meaning that we have already done and talked about it. And if there are any ETAs that you put the ETAs and then status. Uh, this uh, this uh, snapshot basically can be applied or the, the, uh, the, uh, the strategy can be applied for both entire team meetings or, and or maybe with the one-on-one -on -one with your team.